Hi everyone, this is Anetic, the show Jeanette, and I'm here today with much excitement and contemplation on the latest topic for you guys. Oh goody, I haven't done one of these in a while. Let's see. What year was I born? What's my gender? PC, mobile. Okay, so based on your experience playing Genshin Impact, what do you think of Genshin Impact in general? Mm, I would say somewhat interesting. Based on your experience playing Genshin Impact, what do you think of the following content in general? Let's see, visiting the different nations. I always find that interesting. Solving puzzles. I like the puzzles. Enjoying the scenery. Oh, the scenery is great. Finding monsters. Okay. I have a problem with this one. Uh, mostly because I am at that level where I feel like the uh, monsters are too easy. Even with the new ones. You know, like those knights? Yeah, those knights in Anchor to Me or whatever. Still too easy. So I know it can be difficult for newer players. But at my level, I would hope the monsters be higher level. I would say um, somewhat boring. Gang materials in Genshin Impact's open world such as various kinds of lore, bleh, very kinds of ore, fruit, and flowers. It's, it's okay, but it's kind of boring to be honest. Finding an open treasure chest. I can't speak today. Finding an opening treasure chest in Genshin Impact's open world. That one is very interesting. I just wish that the treasure chest gives you more reward. Sometimes you do a, like a huge ass like puzzle and you do all these things only to get like five primo gems and not worth it. It's fun, but not worth it. Based on your experience playing Genshin Impact, what do you think of the following content in general? Collecting Genshin Impact characters. I love collecting characters. Obtaining desired characters. I love obtaining characters. Obtaining materials required to level characters, such as character ascension and level up materials. And at this point, it's just routine. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not really happy or upset about it. It's just routine to me at this point. So neutral. Clearing artifact domains repeatedly. Oh my god, no. I know some people enjoy it. I do not. I actually procrastinate every week or even s skip it altogether. So very boring. Obtaining, obtaining materials required to upgrade a weapon. Okay, I'm going to put neutral the same as the character ascension. It's just routine now. Challenging the Spiral Abyss. I enjoy that very much. I know some of my friends don't even do it, but I enjoy the challenge. I wish there were more floors for people who have like five star characters with all the constellation unlike me, but for those type of people, I wish there was more floors for them. Engaging in combat with different party compositions. Love it. Love it. Probably one of the best part about Genshin is the ability to make all sorts of party compositions. I'm gonna answer the question. Oh, okay. Next section. Um, based on your experience, blah, 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 what do you think of advancing the main plot? Um, I guess it's somewhat interesting. As a writer, I feel like the writing could be a lot better. A lot better. Uh, experiencing the hangouts. I actually enjoy the hangouts, but it's always a hit or miss. And I always... I'm not, it's not the first thing I go to. Like, I don't see a hangout and I'm like, oh, I need to go do that hangout. No, it's like one of the last things I do actually. But when I do do them, I enjoy them enough. Some of them, like I said, are hit. Some of them are misses. I guess for the sake of like maybe them improving it, I would say somewhat boring. And hopefully they'll listen to me and then improve it. Experiencing the story quest of Genshin Impact characters. I love it. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the game. Experiencing, you know, the story quests. Especially like Venti's and the new Raiden one. Very interesting. Playing through Genshin Impact's world quests. Yeah, it's kind of like the hangouts. It's either a hit or a miss. Some of them are really engaging. Like the one that you have to do to get rid of the fog. On that one island in um, Inazuma. I love that one. 
but a lot of other ones like the ghost one can be a bit tedious so i'm gonna just be like i do want them to improve it so whenever i want them to improve something i think i have to put boring somewhat boring. okay based on your experience what do you think of the following content playing through the <laughs> So it's the serenity part system. Boring. Uh, no offense to everyone out there who love Sims and building your teapot, but I built my teapot and now it's just there. I do collect fish for it though. Playing Genshin impacts matching gameplay, such as matching to challenge domains. Okay, it's fun. I rarely do it, but it is fun and I see the appeal. I just wish it was in a bigger scale. Like, let's not just... Um, Let's not just condense it to... No. Let's not just restrict it to domain. Why do we have to restrict it? Why can't they be a spiral abyss or labyrinth dungeon? Or raid? Where you can match up with other players or match up with your friends. So I'm gonna say very boring. Because I really, really, really want this to change. Okay, completing Genshin Impact's achievements. It's okay, but it's pretty boring. Playing through events of each version such as Lantern Right. This one is interesting. I just wish it wasn't so time gated. The current event in in Enkonomiya, I love that event. I love opening chests, I love exploring, and I love that it's not time gated. And I wish some events just stay forever. Like uh, Wind Trace. What if one day I just feel like, hey, no, we have some time. Let's play some Wind Trace with my homies, you know? Why can't that be permanent? Whatever. I think it's your impact in co-op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. Could be better, but it is interesting. Okay, next. Based on your experience playing get your impact in the last three months, are you dissatisfied? Ooh, dissatisfied. Yes, this is the juicy stuff for you. Dissatisfied with any of the following. The way at which the story is updated is too slow. New regions are updated too slowly. The art quality of the new regions do not meet my expectation. The gameplay of the mechanics isn't fun. The plot is not attractive enough for me. I'm gonna pick that one on right away we need to have the plot be more mature for mature audience not ma like overly mature but right now at the way it's at right now it's for children it's for like high schoolers middle schoolers we want at least up to the level of young adult like late high school young adult is where we want the plot to be process of appearing an ideal artifact is born and repetitive a hundred percent not even close like I wish they changed the artifact system. Like, get this. What if after a certain amount of times you go through the domain, you get to pick the main deck? Like, let's say whatever you get, like a flower or a feather or a sands or whatever, you get to pick the main stat. You would still have to rely on luck and rolls to get the right substat, and when you roll into it to get even better substats. But at least, at least give us the right main stat. Do you know how wonderful it would be if I can just get Hydro Damage for Tartalia's set? That's all I want. And a lot of people, that's all they want. They want a Geo Damage for the Edo set. They want the Pyro Damage for um, Utao's set. That's what we want. Or like we want to pick Crit Damage, or we want to pick our Crit Rate. Everything else can still be RNG. But after doing a domain a certain amount of time, we should be able to choose our main stat. And I'm never gonna stop talking about this. I hope they give you that section where you get to write out your response. I'm gonna write it out. Uh, you have to spend money to have a better in-game experience. I don't agree. I think free-to-play has a lot of good in-game experience. And if my camera's shaking, it's because of my cat. The combat difficulty in Getcha Impact is too high. No. It takes too much time and effort to obtain a character for free. Eh, I don't agree. There are too many enhancement materials required to obtain. It's okay. The design of the new characters do not meet my expectations. It costs too much money to wish for a character. This one. Anyone out there who hasn't done the survey yet because I'm doing it a, a little bit late, everyone, please, please, for the love of God, pick this one. It costs way too much money. Way too much money. And let's say we keep the current system. There has to be a second system in place to help people out, especially people who don't have money. There has to be a better way to get a constellation for a character of your choosing. Like, what if I want, um, what's a good constellation? Hmm. 
What if I want C1 of Eula? There has to be another way besides Wish on Eula's banner to get that constellation. You can make it as difficult as you want, but I want a, a way to get that constellation. Yes. One that doesn't cost money, by the way. One that takes effort but doesn't cost money. Please, Genshin, do something like that. It would be so much better. There are not enough new characters. The skill design of newborn isn't interesting. The, okay. I get to pick up to five. I think uh, new regions are updated too slowly. I actually like the art quality a lot of everything. Um, I get to pick one more. The rate at which the story is updated is too slow. I think that's true. I think that's true. Do I want to switch out anything else? Um, hmm. The thing is, it says the design of the new characters do not meet my expectations. So does that include um, kits? Or is it just physical? Because aesthetically, all the characters fit my expectations. But kit-wise, no. I think I need have I, I might have to switch one of these. I think I'm gonna get rid of the new regions that are updated too slowly. I'm gonna get rid of that. And the design. Because I'm assuming when it says design, it includes kit, it includes numbers, it includes everything. Let's hope that's what it means. In the last three months, how much time do you spend per day on average browsing get your impact related community content? Oh no! Oh no. Basically, how obsessed are you with this game? I would say two to three hours. Yeah, I know I'm a working adult and I don't play this game for three hours, but I do look at a lot of YouTube content. Like I'm at the gym and I'm like watching like a tech tone or MTash video or something. I'm so guilty of doing stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, and also I watch a lot of Mr. Walrus's up. Uh, Oh, and uh, truth be told, I watch a lot of um, Mr. Walrus' streams. <coughs> In the last three months, how much time do you spend on average per day on gaming, including Genshin Impact and other games? I would say it takes me around one to two hours. I, on average, spend around two hours on Genshin Impact every day, um, or one hour and a half. In the last three months, how much money do you spend on average per month on all your games? I spend maybe $50 a month on video games. Sometimes 60 up to 80. Is that, yeah, 51 to 100 is correct. How willing are you to continue experiencing? Actually, I'm pretty willing. I, I hate to say it, even with all the flaws of the game, I'm quite willing. Oh, thank God, okay. I'm gonna write an essay, should I? No, okay, let me type up a couple things. First of all, like in all my survey entries, I would like Yoria Mia's kit to be better. It is buggy because sometimes she shoots at nothing. Her aim, especially being a bow user, should be more on point. He needs to aim at enemies, not at the sky. Next, I would like to address the current state of Genshin Impact in regards to in regards to the newer characters. Basically, a lot of the newer characters are not up to par to my standards. Why? It is because they have such high energy costs that it is sometimes ridiculous. For example, why does Ye Miko have 90 energy costs first? It makes no sense. Why Eula with a lower energy cost can do more damage. I feel like the newer characters are not living up to expectations. More so because 
the older characters can do the same things better, such as Bennett. What the community really wants is not to replace Bennett, per se, but that we want characters with more interesting kits. I think Jean has one of the most unique kits in the game because she can launch an enemy into the sky. Wow. That is innovative. We need more innovation in the upcoming kits in order to make Genshin Impact more enjoyable. Besides the characters, the plot needs to be more engaging with engaging with less amount of fetch press and dialogue. A lot of the dialogue are redundant and we do not need that. The plot also needs to move along faster with more combat involved. Last but not least, I am not happy with the resin and artifacts system in place. There are more weekly bosses than ever before, but we are still capped at Three per week at the lower resin cost. It should increase to four, if not five, per week at 30 resin cost. The artifacts system in place is very repetitive and frustrating. I have known many ex-players who left the game because of this system. The reason why it is terrible at the moment is because we have to rely on so much luck for everything to work out from main stat, sub stat, and lucky rolls. If anything, the artifacts should be able the artifacts with the correct main stat that we want should be an option after a certain amount of times that we fight in the domain. If not this, it would be nice to be able to pick which of the two artifacts that we can receive. For example, the Maiden set is outdated and we as players will love the ability to pick the viridescent set instead of the maiden set all the time. Um, not all the time. Every time we set foot in that domain. The, the fan base enjoy the rolling aspect of the artifact set but not the farming of the artifact domain itself please consider my long feedback i would love for a couple of these changes to happen good luck that was very long sorry about that everyone <sighs> but that's how I feel. And let's submit it.
You're welcome.